Quack. So out of out of curiosity, how many how many people here are familiar with DuckDB? I've heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have a few people that have yeah, that know it a little bit and then people that that are just expo exposed to it uh, for the first time. And that's that's great because my my talk at least from a from a very selfish point of view, my talk is for uh, let's say people that are uh, learning about DuckDB for the first time. Um, today I think we have endless data processing technologies, uh, but we're all busy people and I'm here to tell you why I think DuckDB is worth our time, really. Like, why, sh why should we invest our brain cycles to, to learn about it and use it? Um, yeah, sorry. First, a disclaimer. So I'm here in my own personal accords. I, I am not uh, here on behalf of my employer, Google, or Alphabet. Um, just starting with that um, so the big data landscape in the in the past in the past 10 years um, I was looking at this and you see here in you know in 2012 we had quite a few technologies but there's not that many of them and uh, yeah fun fact here a shameless plug I guess is Tengen is actually the MongoDB company I used to work for MongoDB before before Google uh, so they were part of the I guess the, the data lands landscape even from back then um, in 2016, uh, the space got a bit more crowded. You can still see the logos, you can read the companies, like there's a lot more of them, but, but it's still uh, somewhat easy to grasp. And then in 2023, you can no longer understand what's happening, right? Like there's like just too many tools, a lot, a lot of tools. Somewhere out here, you can spot a wild duck, it's duck TV. Uh, basically, if, I, if you think of big data today, we've got a staggering amount of tools. I, I did a very finger in the air estimation and I think we have about nine, nine times more uh, than we had in 2012, but I think that's probably a low estimation. I think there's probably a lot more than that. It's, there's a lot of startups in the, in the space as well. Um, we've got data warehouses, we've got data lakes, we've got lake houses, we've got, uh, you know, extract transform low, we got ELT, then we have EL. Honestly, it all feels a little bit ET. The, the, ex the explosion of, of options is, is both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because we have a lot of uh, tools to choose from. So we can, we can go and choose the, the thing that seems to work best for our use case. But also the, the problem is that we, we all have the same amount of hours in the day. And the question arises, or a question arises, what is a good investment of our time? Because we can't possibly learn everything. There's just too much. Uh, too much diversity in the space. Um, at the same time, I think SQL has established itself as the as a de facto language of choice for data processing, like the T in, in ETL. Uh, it's a it's a universal language that many analysts speak, uh, and it has vast support in many platforms. Especially if you think of the big data ones like Snowflake or BigQuery or uh, many of the Redshift. Like there's there's again too many too many tools, but it is, it is, it brings me to, to DuckDB, right? Which is a database that, that uh, uses the SQL query language. Um, so if databases held a popularity contest, they would all be uh, looking at the database engine's ranking. Uh, this is, a, I guess, a good proxy for how database technology fares to, to one another. Um, it uses several ranking factors like uh, website mentions, uh, search engine traffic. Like it, it, it basically looks at people's interest in database technologies. And I guess I'll, I'll make a small, uh, small segue here to, to point you to the DALI generated image, which I thought was very funny because it's almost correct, right? <laughs> Only it has little errors. And my, fav my personal favorite being Mongrez B, which I <laughs> imagine is a... Uh, combination of MongoDB and Postgres. Um, but I thought it was funny, so I, I kept it. Um, basically, the, the ranking looks like this. You have a, a number of databases, like MySQL obviously being a, a popular one, Postgres, like a, a popular open source databases, MongoDB being you know, one of the top 10. But then you have DuckDB. And DuckDB is 86. But actually, a year ago, it was 153. 
So it's growing fast. Um, and I think if we compare it to, to Snowflake, which is obviously a very successful platform of choice for, for data analysis, um, and maybe you could argue that it's not a, a fair one-to-one -one comparison because Snowflake is a platform and, and DuckDB is a database engine, uh, but still it's, they, they operate in the same space. Um, so I thought it would really be relevant to, to look at the two and, and compare them. So you can see that the growth that DuckDB is experiencing in the same amount of time in about, in about two years is similar to Snowflake's early days. Now Snowflake did taper off around that time. And as it reached, I guess it's, it's initial user base, it, it stayed somewhat flat for, for the next year and a half, two years. Whereas DuckDB is continuing to grow, although the curve seems to be flattening a bit. Uh, but in my, I guess in my, in my read of this, of this chart is that uh, DuckDB is, is, has reached enough people already. Like it's certainly, uh, it's certainly generating a lot of noise in the, in the market. And after a few more years, it's, it's, it's very well placed to actually explode, to become mainstream and become a de facto tool in, in a data engineer's uh, tool set. Also notice that this, this scale is lo logarithmic. So every line is actually a 10x increase, right? Snowflake increase. 10x, DuckDB increased 10x, and it's set to, to reach another 10x. It's probably like six at the moment. Um, in any case, I think that this makes DuckDB a very useful skill to have, like a, a certainly a useful skill to invest at this very point in time. Uh, I can show you some other nonsensical stats, uh, GitHub stars, for example, like they don't really show much. Uh, after all, anybody can go and star, star a project. But what I find interesting here is that if I compare it to Postgres, it's reached the same amount of stars in about half the time. And I mean, obviously, Postgres has been around for longer than 2012. It's just that this is, this is how much data they have here, but it's growing fast. That's, that's really like the, the key takeaway in my, in my opinion. Also, like uh, the it's, it's Python library is seeing about 1.7 million downloads from on PyPy. Um, so, it's competing for attention span with many of the open source popular databases out there, like the transactional ones at least. So that brings me to features, right? Like what's, what's so cool about it anyway? So it's an in-process database. Uh, it runs anywhere. It's as simple as doing a brew install DuckDB or maybe use apt or yum, whatever. You install it and you can run it and you can process data. Uh, it can be run as a Python library. So uh, that also obviously means that you can run it in any sort of Jupyter compatible notebook. Uh, it, it's, it's super easy. Uh, and of course, it, because of that, you can run it in CI and you can run it in any cloud environment and so on. Um, it has a universal, like, I guess it has a, the advantage of being universally compatible. Like it even runs in your browser. In fact, if you scan this QR code with your phone and you have a an, an, uh, Chromium based browser, you can actually You'll end up in shell DuckDB and you can run queries on your phone, uh, which I think is pretty cool uh, as far as technology goes. Um, in terms of extensions, so it has a very, a very flexible extension mechanism. Uh, they're dynamically loaded at, at runtime. Um, it can read JSON, it can read Parquet, it can read many other formats actually, but it can also di read directly from S3, which means you could, for example, point DuckDB at a CSV hosted in, in S3 and just process it straight away. You can treat a CSV file as a, as a database with no further uh, processing without needing to import it. Like it's, it's very straightforward and it's very fast. Um, the TLDR is that you've got endless integration poss possibilities, especially because you can bring your own extension. Like if you want, you can develop your own extension and then load it in, in DuckDB and integrate it with something else. Uh, it's just a binary at the end of the day. So it's very low complexity. You don't have to deal with credentials. You don't have to deal with ACLs. You don't have to deal with firewalls. Uh, it's, it's just a, a very simple tool and that has a major advantage. Uh, also, it has no dependencies. So it has a small footprint and you don't end up in this uh, scenario, right? Where you install it and then it installs a million other things. Uh, so it's, it's efficient to, to run as well. Uh, it, integrates with data frames. Um, and obviously that means you can query and store results uh, in Pandas data frames. So even if you run across some data set that maybe is not directly queryable from, uh, from DuckDB, you can actually use Pandas as 
or data frames as the, the glue between this. And it's also stable and efficient. So DuckDB in general works very hard to avoid out of memory exceptions. Um, it offloads to disk as needed. And it's also very fast. So the, the team has worked in the past few, I guess, in the past year to, to improve its speed. And it has, has achieved some, some pretty significant improvements in speed. Uh, so in my opinion, simplicity always wins. Uh, if you look at big data, I guess traditionally processing, processing data in a big data setup, uh, it has hidden complexity costs. And sometimes they may not be necessary. Um, if you look at uh, like one machine, like one machine will run, right? It's, it's generally rare for your laptop to crash. And even if it does, the probability of a second laptop to, to crash, to, to fail is lower, but also you're a user and you will notice if something is wrong. It's not like you're running thousands of machines like, like, a, like a big data distributed system would, where failure is not only uh, expected, but it actually happens. And if you have any sort of long running non retriable pipelines, which which tend to be affected by one failure towards the end of the pipeline, you end up rerunning re re the whole thing. And in some cases, obviously, uh, paying for it, right? Because the cloud isn't free. Um, DuckDB, in, in this sense, allows you to, to iterate faster and, and cheaper, uh, especially as you, as you shift left and you, you, you start figuring out your data sets and like what to do with them before you productionize them. Now, obviously, like, you know, you will any any sort of production productionized pipeline will uh, will be run in the cloud, right? But the fact that you can process it and, and iterate lo locally on your laptop is is a big advantage. Um, and also, you can save your company some money because uh, you know you already have a powerful MacBook uh, sitting on your desk, and it can actually do a lot on its own. Um, now, in closing, I'd like to show you three three syntactic features that I really like. Uh, about DuckDB's uh, SQL syntax. So the first one is the first one is group by all. Um, traditionally, when you write a query, you aggregate by a number of fields. And let's say you do a, you compute some sort of aggregation, right? You have to like repeat the same fields in the in the group group by clause. Uh, or in DuckDB, you can just say group by all. So that makes the query much 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 easier to read, but also much easier to edit because you don't have to. Usually, usually your query is not going to look like this. You're probably going to look at a page of query formatted, like you're going to have to scroll up and down. Uh, so just having group by at the end means you can anytime change the list of fields, and, and you don't have to repeat yourself, right? The DRY principle, if you will. Now, then it has the select exclude uh, syntax. So instead of let's say selecting 20 fields and excluding one. You can actually select star and exclude only the one, right? Much easier to, to again to write and to read or for someone to understand. And finally, if you have something like timestamps, right? Like where you're trying to join, uh, let's say almost equal timestamps, but they're never quite equal because you always have you know millisecond differences. You could try to bucket them in ANSI SQL, but it's not like it's possible. But it, the syntax isn't nice. Uh, or in DuckDB, you can do an as of join. Right, and you can specify the fields, and then let DuckDB uh, figure that out for you, and also optimize it. So that's pretty much what I had. Uh, I hope at least I can spark your interest a little bit. Um, if you'd like to learn more about DuckDB, there is a a free book. Uh, actually, there are some QR codes uh, there that you can take and then scan, and then you, you get an early access to the to the DuckDB book. Uh, there's a conference happening next week, actually, in Amsterdam, uh, DuckCon number four. Um, there's a, repos a repository I found, which, I, which is pretty cool. Like it lists a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, I guess, tools in, in the space and integrations that DuckDB has. Like it basically captures the DuckDB ecosystem. And of course, you can join one of our future events. Um, thank you so much. And if you have any questions. <laughs>